Welcome back to the Common Application. Let's complete our application to Pacific University. Before I log into my Common App account, I want to point out that I am just as prepared as I was when I started my applications. Um, and that means having everything in front of me that I know I'm going to need for this section, including knowing what the prompt is for Pacific University's short answer question. And I've typed up my response and I'm ready to copy and paste that into the application when I get to that section. So now that I'm ready to go, I'm going to log in. And this will take me immediately to my dashboard. And that has a list of all of the colleges and universities that I'm planning to apply to using the Common Application. And it has some information about where I'm at in that process. So when I scroll down to Pacific University, it tells me I'm still in progress. I can show more details and that will pull up some information about where I'm at. Now you'll notice that the Common Application, that's that the biggest part of the application with all the questions that uh, each of the colleges wants to know and that bulk of the application is going to go to all of the colleges I'm applying to, that's complete. I know that both because the word complete is there, but also because of this green check mark letting me know that I've done everything I need to do on that section. The purple pencil tells me that there's still some editing to do, and so I'm going to click on the first link after a purple pencil, and it'll take me to the section where I can start answering those questions. Just like before, the left-hand side has some uh, menu headers to tell me where I'm at in the process, and so I can keep an eye on that. I have three things I need to do still for Pacific University. Now, these questions are being asked by Pacific University, um, and the answers that I submit are only going to go back to Pacific. So as you're doing your applications, you may notice that in this section, some of the questions may sound similar or even be identical as they would be to another colleges or universities. And so you'll just need to answer those questions again uh, because remember that these questions and the answers to these questions are only going back to the university that you're working on right now or that's highlighted in blue on the left hand side. So we'll get started with the first question, preferred start term and a reminder uh, that the red asterisk or star means that these are required questions. There may be some questions that don't have that star. Those are optional, but there might be a good reason to answer them. And so as we go through, we'll talk about that. So my preferred start term. Now, if you'll recall, I know that I'm planning to graduate in the spring of 2021 and would like to start classes the following fall. So I'll choose that. And my preferred admission plan means what kind of application am I submitting? There are uh, two basic options listed here um, with two deadlines for the first option. So early action is the option of submitting my application under an early or preferred deadline. And when I do that, the college is going to review my application early and give me an answer about my admission early, but I still have, it's not binding, so I still have until the spring to make my final decision about where I'll attend. And I can do that under two different deadlines for Pacific University. There's also the rolling admission option, and rolling admissions is an option where uh, the deadline is later than under early, and I can submit my application and they'll review my application and send an answer to me and I still have an option um, to wait until the spring to, to tell them what my plan is. Um, the primary difference is that my application will be reviewed sooner and with preference in the first two options here. I'm going to choose rolling admission and you can choose whichever makes the most sense for you. Now they want to know where I'm planning to live during my first year. And I have two choices of living on campus in the residence halls or off campus, but this tells me that if I choose to do that, I need to be approved for that. And that is an indication to me that living on campus is something that is important um, to the community. And that's what I would like to do. So I will say on campus. And there are some specific school-specific fee waivers 
Um, so if I have been granted a fee waiver, so an application fee waiver, uh, by one of these methods, I would choose that here. And I have not, so I'm going to say no, but if you have, you'll, you'll choose one that works for you. I do intend to pursue need-based aid, and that means I plan to submit either the FAFSA or the ORSA. And this is a question asking if there is, if there are other scholarship opportunities that I might be interested in. And I have already gone through and checked to see whether or not I might be eligible for any of these. Um, I did that before I came to the application and I don't believe that I'm eligible for any of these, so I'm going to choose I will not be pursuing any of the above awards. Uh, but if you notice that any of these are something you do qualify for, you should select those, of course. And you can select more than one. So I've said I'm not applying for any of those, but I could choose, for example, another one, and it would allow me to do that. Now here I've come to my short answer, and um, it's asking me about how Pacific fits into my goals. And I can copy. and paste that directly into the box and click continue to move on. So this is the place where I get to say, I really want to study and I go through the list to see what my options are. And these are the various departments that are available at Pacific. And so I can scroll down to see what those choices are. And I think that I am most interested in social work but I have a second option as well that I'm interested in. And so I'm going to go down to find that as well. And I think for me, that is going to be sociology. And I can click continue and move on to activities. So we have already provided information about what activities we participated in prior to coming to Pacific. Now they're interested in knowing what of their activities might we be interested in participating in once we're a student there. And uh, there's a drop down menu of the different choices that are available and we can choose up to five of those. And so let's go through the process of doing that. So I can look down to see what are the different choices, and I already see one that is catching my eye, community service. That's something I've done in high school and would like to continue, but I saw some others that might be interesting. So let's add another activity and scroll through the list again. And I think that I'm definitely interested in studying abroad, so going to another country to study for a semester or a year. And let's add one more activity and I think I might be interested in student government. I can add up to two more if I want and press continue. This section is about my relationship with Pacific University. So they're wondering um, how I heard about them and any other contact that I've had with them up to this point. Um, I have not previously applied to Pacific University, so I'm going to say no. If I chose yes, let's see what happens, they ask for the date of that application. This is the college wanting to be able to connect any applications that you've already submitted to this one so they have a full picture of who you are when you're submitting your application. So you'll want to choose the correct answer there. The next is wanting to know how did I learn about the university and I have up to 10 different options that I can share about how I learned about the university and they want to know which was the most important in influencing me to consider the college. And so I can scroll through this list of options that might be available to me and I first learned and the most influential thing that happened was somebody came to my high school and talked to me about Pacific and I thought that was really interesting. I don't remember that person's name, but I do remember that it was in my junior year, so sometime in 2019 in the fall. And so I can add another contact and this time um, I want to say that the next thing that I did was go to the website and I learned more information there that got me even more excited. 
perfect. And then I click continue. And now they're asking some questions about my family. And we have already provided some information about family in the common app section. This is really about what are my family's relationships to Pacific like. So the first question is, do I have any siblings who are applying for admission to Pacific this year? And the answer for me is no. If I clicked yes, let's take a quick look to see what happens. They want to know what my relationship to that sibling is, so whether that's my brother or my sister, and then additional information, their name, basically. Um, and I can add up to five siblings who are applying at the same time as me. But I don't have a sibling who's applying, so I will go ahead and say no. I also have never had any relatives attend Pacific, but again, let's look to see what happens if we say yes they ask additional questions. So who that person might have been, and if I say yes here, they're going to ask me for information about that person, including how many degrees they earned from the college. And so you will want to know the answer to that question. But again, this is not true for me, so I'm going to go ahead and say no. And then a question of any relatives ever working for the university. And for me, the answer is no. But again, if you were to click yes, additional questions will pop up. Uh, basically, they just want to know who those people are. So they're looking to know what is your family's relationship with the university. And once we've completed that, we can go ahead and click continue. Now we're going to talk about the recommenders and FERPA section. FERPA stands for the Federal Educational Rights and Privacy Act, and we're going to talk about the importance of that and why, why it's necessary for your application in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to say, if you're working on your very first supplement to the Common App, so your first college or university supplement, your page is going to look different from this. Once you do this one time for your supplement, it's going to be completed for all of your subsequent colleges, okay? So it's still important to know, and we can get to it looking a little bit like what that first time looks like here, and we can view the release authorization. When you're working on this for the very first time, you're going to need to read through these instructions. This section about FERPA is all about how to get your academic records and recommendation letters from your high schools or any college that you've previous attend, previously attended to the college or universities that you're applying to. So it's the transfer of your records and being able to do that to, while keeping your privacy rights. You'll want to make sure that you read through these instructions very carefully and that you understand them and when, once you do, you can click this box and that will indicate that you're ready to move on. And what you're moving on to is some additional authorization where you say, yep, I agree to these things. It's okay for my high school or my previous colleges to send information for my application. You also will be, as a part of that, making a decision about what you want to have happen with your recommendation letters. You can choose to have those remain completely confidential so that you never get to see them, um, or you can say, no, I don't want that. I want to be able to have the right to see them at some point. This section here gives you some advice about how to make the best decision for you about that. So once you have read and understand, you're going to click the checkbox, click continue, and it'll take you to a section where you once again need to acknowledge first that Authorizing your records means that that's going to be true for every high school or college you've ever attended to every college that you are um, applying to through the common application. You can have two-way communication between those. Then you have a section where you get to talk about, where you get to make that decision about your recommendation letters, and then you are signing an acknowledgement that says, when you make this decision, you're making it for every college that you're applying to, so you can't make one decision for one college and one decision for another college. It's for all of them. And that the minute that you submit an application or somebody writes a letter of recommendation on your behalf, you can no longer make any changes to this section. So you should make the decision that you uh, mean at the start. 
And so you'll click that, sign your name, date it, save and close, and you can move on to the recommendation letters. Recommendation letters are a, another area that we start the process in the first college's supplement that we're working on and then that information gets pulled through to additional colleges and we get to make some new choices but some of the information is already filled in for us from previous work. Um, that is true for the counselor. So the very first supplement that we worked on, we provided information about who the school counselor was and um, that information was the school counselor's email address and their name and there was a button that was blue that said invite counselor that was listed underneath this counselor section and we entered the information here and now it shows up for every subsequent application that we're working on. Then we move down and we can see here under teacher that Pacific is going to require us to submit one teacher recommendation and it looks this way because we have already provided a teacher rec recommender um, for a previous application. And in this case, I could choose to use this teacher and assign them to Pacific, and then they would be asked to complete the application here. Um, so I've done that, and I've said, I want my English teacher, Ms. Connie Smith, to write my recommendation. I assigned her to that. If I had not wanted my English teacher to do that application, then I could have clicked on the button that said invite teacher, um, and we can do that now, we can change it. So I say, ah, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't want my English teacher to do that. So I'm going to remove the assignment, and I can now invite another teacher. And let's do that now. Oh, I need to give an, the whole email address. And this teacher teaches me math and is Mr. Shuxton White. And yes, this is the teacher that I want to submit my application, my evaluation for Pacific. And so I go ahead and say to invite that teacher. And now this is the person who gets an email letting them know that we're ready to go and they can write my letter of recommendation. This next section on advisor is about a person who might be helping me to work on my application, um, but is not somebody who is submitting any recommendation letters or school forms for me, just somebody who I want to give permission to see my application and provide me personal feedback for it. So if I wanted to do that, I could click on invite advisor and I would provide information there and they would get an email giving them um, a link and permission to participate in my application process. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and click continue. And now I am ready to submit my application. Um, I still need to complete something here. So let's go back and see what I did not finish here. Something in the academics. I know that because there's no green mark. And it's because it didn't catch when I chose a second academic program. No problem, I'll go ahead and fix that and press continue. And this is gonna take me all the way through, so I could just keep clicking continue all the way through, or I can come over here and go back to review and submit common app. Now it's telling me that I have three things that I need to do. The first is to review my application. I'm going to do that to make sure everything I've said is correct and true and accurate then I'm going to pay an application fee if there is one, and then I will go ahead and submit my application. So let's start with that review process. And it's pulling up a PDF. Now this is a pretty small PDF. I can see it, I can scroll through, but I can also uh, click this button to review the PDF and it will bring up the, a much larger uh, op option. And I will want to read through all of this and make sure that everything that I've written is accurate and that I haven't made any mistakes. If I have made a mistake, I can click out of this and use the left menu key to go back to find that section of the application, fix it, and then come back here and review again. So once I've reviewed it and I am confident that it's complete and accurate, I can click here 
and press continue. And now this is reminding me that when I first started my application, I was going to request a fee waiver and so I don't need to do any payment information. If you do, there would be a button that would take you to a, another, uh, a third party site to use your credit card to submit that payment. And then you would come back to this section and press continue. Okay, now we're ready to submit. But before we do that, we have a few things that we need to certify. Um, and we need to read through each of these paragraphs. When we've read them, understand them, and agree to them, we can click the checkbox. And so we need to read, understand, agree for every single one as we go down and sign our name or type our full legal name in here as our signature date the application and click submit. And once we do that, we're done. We've applied to Pacific University and so have you. Congratulations.